Hey, I'm Evan Pantazzi. I'm here to uh, talk to uh, more of the Shuri Tape people today. Um, I've done a lot of Naha Tape, but I've done a lot of Wing Chun and uh, many other forms as well. Anyway, um, here's a form uh, that's uh, almost universally used, and that's Kusan Ku. Now, Kusan Ku starts with the head coming forward and the hands rising up in the triangle. Now, why would the head come forward in a form? Okay, and then the hands come up in a triangle. It then comes down, chops, it chops to one side, chops to another one, punches, turns, punches, turns, and it goes through the whole kata, very lengthy kata at that. Well, the idea of the head coming forward, here's something you can put into your study. It doesn't mean it was the original idea, but this is a very big concept. Now, in some of the old um, uh, uh, notes of uh, the masters and the ninja scrolls, there are diagrams of people um, or bodies, and the head was formed as a triangle, and that would form that hand position out of the Kusan Ku. So, meaning maybe that all the attacks in Kusan Ku are centered toward the head. Okay, so um, in particular with the Kyusho, we can have two different points you can have behind the ear or in the neck, this, this range right in through here. All right, now, folks, here we have the um, area that I'm talking about. Uh, right behind the jaw, you have the um, facial nerve here that ties in also with the zygomatic nerve. Uh, there's a branch there of the temporal nerve. Uh, the facial nerve runs also down into the buccal nerve and also into the mandibular branch. So um, when we're looking at this, um, from the aspect of hitting behind the jaw, we had this very rich area right in through here that we could access this little nerve plexus here, but really hard to miss. I mean, you have all these uh, nerves in through here that you could hit and affect. So um, very hard, again, to miss. Uh, it is no muscle. As you can see, there's a muscle gap right there, so that's where we really want to lean into it. Now, if we go up a little further here and we're looking uh, at the individual's neck, this is the transverse cervical nerve. I'll show you right here, transverse cervical. All right, this is where um, that supposed stomach nine is. Uh, you have it running right across, so you could attack it from the back. You can attack it from the side. You can attack it from the front. So when you're looking um, for uh, the triangle, okay, you have the two hands on either side, the two thumbs coming down here, and then you have them coming up behind the jaw here as the finger. Now, if you're seeing that the head is coming forward, exposing the front of the neck or the back of the jaw, okay, as that, um, that three-pronged or that, that two-sided attack to either side of the head, the two points being the neck and behind the jaw. Okay, from here, coming around, seizing the hand, chopping to the side of the neck using the iron sword, and it could come to the side of the neck here, it could come behind the jaw. If you've dragged the person's arm in, they've grabbed you by the lapel, for example, or they strike and you hit them and they turn to the side, you have the side of the neck to hit, you have the back of the jaw to hit, again, with that iron sword, going to both sides as a viability. You have the punch coming out and then striking. If you punch someone in the gut, their head comes forward, Okay, you can backhand them right behind the ear, or you can hit them right in the side of the neck with that knuckle coming right up. All right, so there's many different concepts. Now, you can take that whole kata, okay, and you can place it so everything targets the back of the jaw or the front of the neck, side of the neck, back of the neck, this whole dermatome right here, because you have the transverse cervical nerve that cuts right across that sternocolatoid mastoid muscle, right about the same location as the windpipe and I'm going to be showing you diagrams throughout this film uh, as well so you can see these alright so again uh, imagine this is being the head the head is extended forward and this is what you're trying to do with the movements of your Kusan Ku even the movements that go to the ground if you kick the leg out from underneath the person and they drop and you grab their hand pull and you have that hand coming up right in back of the jaw, right into the side of the neck, you have another viable alternative. So most of the kata uh, sets up the, the body so the head is coming forward, whether it be a punch in the gut, coming forward, trapping the arm, or blocking the arm down where the head comes in and off to the side for the follow-up here. Uh, you kick out the leg underneath the person, the person comes forward this way, and you grab and hit or hammer uh, both sides, you grab the hair pull, and you can knock the, the back of the jaw. All these different movements of the kata 
signify that you could be ending up on those two. And that's uh, just a little bit of the Q-Show that you could involve. You could, of course, involve the Q-Show with your initial strikes, the Q-Show with your trapping actions, the Q-Show with your kicking actions. It's all up to what, how well you've developed your art. But just as, a, as an idea, start with that hand position coming in as the main idea to hit these two targets. And then try to work with the idea of putting it all the way through the kata. Even in this, you, you've done your kick and you do your, hit, your elbow strike. You kick the guy's leg, his head comes forward. As you do, you grab his head and then hit him right behind the ear or right to the side of the neck, back of the neck, front of the neck, depending on how he falls. So again, Kusanku could be that signatory uh, movement as the head coming forward and you're attacking these two targets in the head. So this is just an idea for you Kusanku uh, practitioners, Shuri practitioners, and we'll come back to you with some more information. Thanks for watching.